bad boys bad boys what you gonna do especially when you run into a wicked woman what's anybody gonna do keep watching to find out what book we're talking about today hey it's kyla denanyo and you're watching kyla's reading day today we are talking about the book bad men and wicked women book was written by Eric Jerome Dickey. This is another installment of Vlogmas 2022 where I am covering an Eric Jerome Dickey novel for 12 consecutive days. <laughs> for one, he's written about 22 books, but also this is one of my favorite authors and I jumped at the chance to cover his books for 12 days. So the genre of this book is fiction. The theme of the book is literature, African-American literature. Let me tell you. This was the first book of the installment of Ken Swift. Now, if you're watching this playlist in order, you will see that I covered Before They Were Wicked, before I covered Bad Men and Wicked Women. But this one actually was written first, and then he wrote this one. And I kind of love that because I'm assuming that Eric Drum Dickey came up with the story for Ken Swift and Jimmy Lee, and then because he references so much of their past, he was like, let me go in and write the other one, right? So Before They Were Wicked, brilliant absolutely brilliant but bad men and wicked women let me tell you my favorite quote from the book is whatever he wants he makes legal whatever he doesn't want he makes illegal so Ken Swift is an enforcer right he goes after people he enforces debts he enforces grudges he enforces revenge that's what he does he goes after people and bad men and wicked women is all set around 20 four hours okay this entire book this is one day in Ken Swift's life you get a couple of flashbacks one day this man is living okay he is absolutely living so that quote is so important because the people who write laws the people who are in charge of writing things and deciding what's allowed and what's not allowed they get to tell you whether you can do something or you can't of course you can still do it right ken swift is still enforcing against people but that's not something that we would readily say is legal it's not something that we would say is okay but why they got to be bad men just because someone said that's not how we are supposed to conduct ourselves right so you really get the juxtaposition of how Ken Swift is making a living, doing what he needs to do to pay his bills and take care of his family. And then the person who's supposed to do it the right way is still doing illegal stuff, but because they don't consider it illegal, they it's fine, right? And so you get to a point in the book where they say one of my least favorite words over and over. And I'm telling you, the word is written at least 300 times. And I say no exaggeration, but I didn't count them. <laughs> but it's it's so hard to read, but at the same time, it's a really important part of the book because you know people say it and Ken Swift and Jake Ellis are considered to be bad dudes because this is how other people see them, right? So you'll know what I mean when you read the book, but the fact that whatever man wants is considered legal, whatever he doesn't want is illegal, is so important because it lets you see how arbitrary everything is not to say that laws don't matter and rules don't matter but it's like you jumped out walking across the street when i was trying to drive i don't want to see that anymore so now it's illegal right jaywalking is illegal and it's like someone took the time to write that to put on the books they did because whatever man considers that they want they can make legal whatever they don't want they can make illegal one of my favorite things about eric drum dickey is the levels of storytelling okay Bad Men and Wicked Women, you know that Ken Swift and Jake Ellis are enforcing for Sam Bernardino. You don't find out who Sam Bernardino is until towards the end of the book. Before they were wicked. If you read this, before you read this one, you hear about Sam Bernardino all the time in here. Let me tell you. Sam Bernardino is the child of one of the people in this book. Thieves Paradise was written 2002. Bad Men and Wicked Women, 2018. The continuity of storytelling and characters and how you see one character in another book is brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. And it is by far one of my favorite things about Eric Drum Dickey. Because if you own all the books like I do and you read them in order, there are so many little Easter eggs and so many tales. And you're just like, they were in that book, they were in that book. 
and it's so cool. It's, it's really, really cool. If you are a true fan of Eric Jerome Dickey's writing and you have read multiple books of his, you will see characters show up all the time. He has a lot of themes that show up in every book and I absolutely love it. So would I reread this book? Yes. This was my second time reading this one. I've read Before They Were Wicked about three times because I really like to see the characters back in the day when they were first meeting. Bad Men and Wicked Women is about 18 years after we saw Ken Swift and Jimmy Lee and it is very, very compelling, okay? So you've been watching this far, thank you. Jump in the comments, let me know, do you like books that give you little Easter eggs or hints to prior books? Do you like to see characters from prior books show up in later books, okay? Because I think that's pretty cool and I love that Eric Drum Dickey does that. So thank you for hanging out with me today on Kyla's Reading Day and I will see you tomorrow for another installment of Vlogmas 2022. <laughs> Bye.